Welcome to the Garments Engage Crochet Podcast, where I chat about crochet garments and other yarny things. I am Michelle Ferguson, crochet pattern designer of Two Brothers Blankets. You can find me at twobrothersblankets.com, on Facebook and Instagram, at Two Brothers Blankets, and every week on YouTube right here for this crochet podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. I hope you'll subscribe to this channel. We are on the very last episode of season two. I cannot believe it. It just flew by. Um, summer flew by. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like I blinked and summer was over. So here we are. This is the last episode. I am going to take a short break, not as, as long as my break last time between season one and season two, only a couple of weeks um, to get prepared. We are starting school next week. And if you don't know, I homeschool my two boys. So got to get that, get into the routine of that and get them started and um, get everything planned out for season three. And then season three will be back up in September. I do not know an exact date yet, hopefully early September, um, but I'm not going to give an exact date till I know for sure. So if you have missed some episodes or um, want to take notes or catch up, that would be a great time to do it. After this week, you can go watch season one and season two, the old episodes and catch up. So what do we got going on? It is August. Um, we have the pre crochet Premie Challenge um, going on. It's a blog hop style event. It is kind of like if you've done the crochet cancer challenge, hat, cancer hat challenge. I don't know the exact name of it. Um, it's kind of the same thing. You pledge to make an item from a free pattern that you get during the challenge, um, there's a new free pattern every day and you, in exchange for the free pattern, you pledge to make an item and donate it. You can donate it to your local hospital, a NICU, a friend who has a baby, a preemie baby. I don't know, any kind of, like I'm sure there's like a list on the thing and I'll link the blog post for it. Um, but that's kind of the whole deal with the challenge. And so we have that going on. It's every day in August. My pattern will be released later in August. So if you're watching this towards the end of August, um, go check it out for sure. Um, and yeah, we've got that going on. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything, any other events. I know there's a bunch of fall events coming up. Um, maybe already started, but none that I am specifically participating in. I think the next big event, like blog hop event that I'm in will be in October. So I'm preparing for it. I need to get on that <laughs> and get everything ready for it. But um, more on that in the later months in season three. Okay, so... Today, I just want to remind you and share with you um, from all we've learned in season one and season two, I just wanted to share the power of altering. Um, season one, I did a lot of like the basic crochet garment um, info on like how to choose your size, how to choose your yarn, and then how to make adjustments, right? Um, and then season two, we've done a, some interviews. We've talked to designers about different techniques and different ways of designing um, garments or crocheting garments and got a lot of great tips from them. And one thing that stuck out to me um, this season was when I interviewed Bonnie of Woodland Stitchcraft. And she talked, I think it was episode two or three, and she talked about how empowering it is to be able to crochet your own clothing, but also alter those, those patterns to make it fit you. So I want to go a little more in depth of that today and just talk about the power of altering a crochet garment. Okay. So first off, alter. I looked it up on the internet, Google. Alter means to, it, when it comes to clothing, to tailor, change, adjust um, for a better fit or to conform to fashion. So altering a garment, whether it's a made of fabric or yarn or whatever, is changing it to get a better fit um, or to conform to fashion, whatever that means, <laughs> um, to be more in style, I don't know. 
But I want to tell you right here as a crochet pattern designer myself, it's okay to alter the pattern. Like if you purchase a garment pattern for me, it's okay to alter it. Now, disclaimer, stop right there. It's not okay to alter it and then sell the pattern yourself. Um, if you make a few tweaks and then try to call it your own, that is not okay. That is copyright. But I feel like people sometimes get, the, the line gets blurred a little right there and people feel like they can't change the pattern for themselves if they're making themselves a garment. And I wanna hear, I'm here to tell you that that's the point <laughs> um, in, for a garment. Um, I want my patterns that you make to fit you perfectly and to look great on you and to make you feel confident. And yeah, I just, I don't want you to have to do it, you know, line by line, row by row perfectly, and then it come out fitting crazy, like not fitting you. I don't know about you, but like sometimes it's with clothing, like regular clothing you buy at the store, um, it doesn't fit, it doesn't always fit. My size doesn't always fit. Some stores I have to go a size up, some stores I have to go a size down from you know what I would consider my normal size because it's all a standard, like it's all made the same, the same length, the same width, the same, you know, per size, but you can't adjust that, right? So I wanna talk about the beauty of having your handmade wardrobe altered to fit you, you alone and others if you decide to make it for others. But when you know how to alter a crochet pattern, crochet garment pattern to fit whoever's body it's on, you have all the power. So let's get into it. I got a little on a soapbox there, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so when you have the, you know how to alter a pattern by making the adjustments that we talked about in season one and season two, you can make anything, literally. Um, it may be something that you feel like is above your skill level, but you can adjust it. You can alter it. You can change something. You can change a stitch. You can shorten something. You can make it smaller. I don't know. You can make anything. You really can. If you know how to make those adjustments, such as length, width, stitches, stitch count, stuff like that, you can make anything. You have the power to make anything, to try any design, any pattern, um, because you know that you can make those adjustments to make it fit or to make it work. It doesn't matter if the stitch is not exactly how it's supposed to be or the exact height or the exact, you know, you're doing it the exact way the designer does it, right? I mean, I <laughs> I feel like I'm contradicting myself in because we we do all this, us designers do all this work to keep that, you know, have that standard. But you can you can do if it's for you, if it's just for you, now not testing or anything like that, you're just making it for yourself for the fun of it to have it in your handmade wardrobe. You can make anything and you can do with it what you please, right? Okay, so number two, you can alter any size when you have that power and you know how to alter you can alter any size so making a sweater for a friend all you gotta do is get get her measurements get his measurements whoever you're making it for get their measurements and you can make it you can make it to fit them so i do commission designing um and when i do that commission designing i am making a product a garment most of the time for someone that is not me so I can't just try it on, right? I can't just check fit as I go, like I say, I tell you guys to. Um, but I get their measurements. Like I'm like, how long are your arms? Measure your arms with this long sleeve shirt and tell me how long it till the end of the, sh the sleeve. And how long is, you know, what is your bust? What is your waist? What is the length? Um, how long do you typically like it? How long do you like your shirts? Measure a shirt that you like the length of. And they give me those measurements and I can make that, that garment fit that person perfectly because I know how to alter it to fit them, to fit their measurements. Does that make sense? Um, so if you're making it for a friend or um, 
anyone, you could se be selling garments on Etsy if you wanted to, sweaters on Etsy, if, as long as you got their measurements. If you did like custom orders for Etsy with and had them put in their exact measurements for each part of their body that you needed to know for that sweater, you could custom make a sweater to fit them and it would, and, and sell it. Um, so when you have that power, when you know how to alter, when you know how, you know, if you need length, add rows, or if you need to change the gauge and figure out the multiples to figure out stitch count so it fits their body perfectly, their, you know, their waist or whatever, you can do that. You can do that with the power of altering and knowing how to make those adjustments. Um, number three, this one's kind of, uh, for me, I guess you could say, or for a, a design, for the designer's sake. The, knowing the power of altering and adjusting a design frees up the standard and the designer. So to explain that better, I have to go by a standard. The, the most typical standard is the Craft Yarn Council uh, sizing charts. And those are, I think it's, um, a woman's bust, so a, my, a medium bust, which is what I wear, is 36 to 38 inches. So it's a three inch difference, 36, 37, 38. Three inch difference per size. And then, so then like you go up to the next size and it's 40 to 42. So 39 just not in there at all. <laughs> um, so, and I always recommend to go up a size if you're in between. Um, and then you gotta factor in positive ease or negative ease or no ease or whatever. So we go by that standard as designers. That is the standard that's been set. Um, but we know that not everybody fits into those standards. Um, I have short arms. Every time I design a sweater and I put a certain row number, my testers have to add length to their arm, <laughs> to the sleeves, because I guess I have short arms. Some people might be really tall. Um, some people might have small waist. Some might not have such small waist. We are all different and that is wonderful. We are all different. We are not, we are not set to a standard size chart, right? Um, so, by teaching you guys and um, others to how to make those adjustments to the pattern so that they fit, it frees up that weight on us, on designers, because we know, we know believe me, we know that, we are, that everyone is a different size. Like, I mean, have you seen those commercials or those like images on Facebook or whatever where it's like, the woman, it's like 10 women, they all weigh 160 pounds and they all look so different because they're all different heights and shapes and everything. Like <laughs> we're all different shapes and sizes and that is great. Um, so to put it into a standard, which I mean, you can tell the Craft Yarn Council, no dig on Craft Yarn Council. There has to be some sort of standard, right? Like some sort of starting point. Um, and they, you know, they do like it's 36 to 38 inches, like it's a range, but we all don't fall into that range. And like, like I've told you guys before, technically I'm a small shirt in the bust, but I wear medium because I have a little bit thicker arms and, a, and I'm pear shaped. So my waist and hips are not a small at all. So like it, it's, you know, like it, that's how it is. That's how it is with everybody. Um, so it frees that up for us. Like if someone knows how to make that adjustment to fit their body, I don't know. It, the weight is not on us, I guess. I don't even, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's not, it's not anything anybody's doing wrong or right. Um, but it just, it's just, just so you know, we know that the standard is not always how it always is, like fits everybody. So when you can make that adjustment, it's, it's a lot easier on us too. So that's, I mean, that's part of my mission. I want people to be able to do it on their own and feel confident in, in crocheting their own garment that's gonna fit them and feel great. And, I, and if you just look at a standard pattern that has the standard sizes from that standard yard, uh, size chart, you're gonna, you're gonna come up 
you know, it's going to be too short or too long or whatever. It's not going to, it's going to be too tight in some areas, stuff like that. So yes, there's a standard. Yes, there's a starting point. Yes, designers have to go off of that. But when you can adjust, who cares, right? I mean, you can make those adjustments to fit and then you have, but you have that pattern to make, to have that starting point. So you know, this is set to fit this, but I have a bigger waist, so I need to either go up a hook size or add some stitches or whatever. See what I mean? Okay, and lastly, I just it's just empowering, right? Like when you finally figure out how to make those adjustments, how to make those changes that you need, it's empowering. Like I can do this. I can make this, right? Like you're you're practically a designer with without you're you're being a designer you can design without being a designer like you can go off a pattern or you can figure it out yourself if you want to make a certain type of sweater when you know how to figure out the stitch counts how to make those adjustments how to get it to fit you don't even really need a pattern and i'm not saying don't buy patterns please buy patterns <laughs> um, we rely on you guys to check out our patterns um as designers but because you, it is good to have that starting point and to have those instructions and those tutorials and whatever. Um, but to be able to do it on your own, to make the adjustments to fit, it's just so empowering. And then you can, you know, if you struggle with buying clothing at the store because it never fits right, making your own might be like your the, the, a great option. You know, like it just... It's empowering. I don't know other than to say it feels really good and it makes it fun. It makes the process fun. Um, you feel confident, you feel more confident in a garment that fits you well, right? And we talked about in a couple episodes back, feeling confident in your garments and tips to do that. So when you have a garment that fits really well and that looks, you feel like looks really good on you, you feel more confident and it, it's the whole thing makes it worth it, right? So anyways, that's a big spew about <laughs> um, the power of, of altering. But I just, I just want you guys to know that like it's okay to alter a pattern that you bought from me or any other designer. It's not okay to resell it because you made a few little tweaks. Don't do that, that's not good. Um, but that's okay, it's okay and it's good and it, and it frees us up from that pressure of having to make sure it fits everybody because there's just no way we can do that. There's just no way we as designers can do that. So I hope you find this encouraging. If you feel like you still don't know how to alter if you've watched my episodes and you're still a little confused um, or you still have questions, let me know in the comments for one. And second, I highly, highly, highly recommend you check out my ultimate guide to crocheting garments. It is a four day free email series that I have put together um, as like my opt-in for my email list um, for those that are interested in that. And I literally explain sizing, measuring, gauge, why gauge is important, how to use your gauge to adjust your stitch count, like the formula used that I use to figure out stitch count. I give that away. Um, and then I share some of the easiest garment patterns that I have for you to try. And so it's four days, it's a free email series. Um, you can unsubscribe afterwards if you feel like it, but I don't want you to because I hope you know that it will inspire you to try out more and to um, dig deeper. But it's a great, great, great start. And if you have questions, feel free to email me. Feel free to comment below, and I will do my best to answer your questions as well because I want. That's like my goal in all of this is to help crocheters feel confident in making, in adjusting, and in wearing crochet garments. So. I hope that inspired you a little. I got a little soapboxy there. <laughs> All right, let's talk about what's in my whip bag. So I went on vacation. I didn't design anything for over a week. Um, I brought three whips with me on vacation. I did not crochet near as much as I had intended to crochet, but I did get some work done. So I'm gonna share. So I you remember I was like, I'm going to work on that derby duster vest with the cobble yarn because I really want to update it, blah, blah, blah. 
I did not work on it once. <laughs> I don't know why. I just, you know how you just feel like doing something else sometimes. And I, I just didn't feel like working on it. So I did work on, this is a um, whip that I've, that's been sitting around for like a year. And I never finished it for some reason. And I was like, I need to finish that because I like it. So this is a Susie sundress um, made in Shine Sport. I had to look at it. Shine Sport from We Crochet. It's a cotton blend. So I have, yeah, it's a cotton blend. So I have the original Susie sundress. I frogged the dress part and made it a tank top. And it is in Premier Yarns Cotton Fair. Well, I wanted to make one for in We Crochet yarn because I am a We Crochet ambassador or whatever it's called um and also i wanted to i f when i had the dress in the cotton fair i think i made it in a small and i i've just succumbed to the fact that i need to size up <laughs> so i and i felt very very insecure in it like really insecure like i had on three layers of like undergarments just so that nothing showed and then it sucked me all in like i felt very insecure honestly and so I have decided I wanted to size up for this new one as well. So this is a medium and if it's much, much better, I feel much more confident in it. It's a darker color. So it kind of covers a little better. Um, so I'm almost, almost done. I'm at like almost to my knee. Like I want it to get to like right at my knee um, since it's a dress and I don't want it to be too short or anything. Um, so I'm so close. I'm like three inches maybe. So I just want to finish it and take some pictures and all that. So that's what I grabbed first on vacation to like work on. But like I said, I did not crochet that much. I did a ton of reading, which was awesome. I love to read. Like if I didn't crochet, I'd be some kind of like book blogger or something because <laughs> I love reading and I don't get to as much with job and homeschooling and all that. So I did a lot of reading. I finished two books. I was so happy. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't crochet much. But then I also brought this, which if you remember, I shared this a while ago, a little while ago, a couple, ep couple episodes back. It's a whip that I just happened upon that I never finished, probably over a year old. And I really loved the yarn. It's like a beautiful teal color with black speckles. So I worked on it for a little bit and I got a few more rows of it done. So I don't know when I'll finish that. Um, ideally, I'd like to finish it, but you know, here soon, but who knows? Cause I really, I'm, I'm still working on a commission design. I put that away for vacation, but now I'm back to it and I really want to get it done by the end of next week. I've set myself a deadline for that. <laughs> so, so that I can start working on fall designs and other stuff and finishing up whips and all that. I really do still want to finish that derby duster vest and get it updated. Um, hopefully by spring, it will be all ready and updated. Um, which is kind of a springy, summery type vest anyway. So that's what's in my whip bag. Now we're gonna do a brutally honest review. It is not a yarn this time. I remember when I reviewed the Hook Nook Small Stuff yarn and I said I was going to review the Hook Nook Skein Savers. Well, that's what I'm reviewing today. Um, so these come in a set of three. I should have checked the price. I wanna say they're like eight bucks for like a set of three, $7.99, something like that. They have these little ball thingies on the ends of them. Um, and here it is wrapped around a skein. First thing, there's no directions, which I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but there's like nothing, nothing. Wrap around your skein, nothing. So that was a little, I was like, no directions whatsoever. So this is what it looks like out of the package. It's got like this, it, it reminds me of like my old hair ties, like even like the ball. Wasn't there hair ties that had like the little balls on the end? like this to put like in your pony. That's what it reminds me of. That's the same feeling. It has the same little thing in the middle. It looks like a hair tie to me. So I guess you wrap it around your skein and it 
you probably would wrap where it's like, so this one's got a bunch of yarn wrapped around it. So it's not really going anywhere, but you would probably just wrap it around the end. And then I think like you can do, put one on each side um, and it keeps it all together or the end from coming undone um, is I guess the point of it. Frankly, I'm a little unimpressed. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I get it. I totally get it. And like I've told you guys when I reviewed the small stuff, Jessica's amazing. She is like the coolest. Um, she designed, she has a yarn store. She has created her own yarn. Like she's the coolest. Not a dig on Jessica at all of the hook nook. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I get it. I'm just kind of unimpressed. I thought it would do more or be more something more to it. I don't know. Like, I guess that's it. I guess that's what it does. And it just keeps it all together like that. So I guess if you had like a big messy skein halfway done, halfway used, falling apart, it might be a little more impressive because it would hold it all together. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong and you need to do it over like a cake of yarn or a ball of yarn. But I'm pretty sure I saw it like this when I saw a picture, like on a skein. I guess that's all there is to it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of unimpressed. I mean, I like it. Um, and you get three for eight bucks. But I don't know. I don't know. They're cool. They work. I just thought there was more to it, I guess. They're just like little ponytails that wrap around your yarn. For me, I'd just rather buy a $2 pack of 50 <laughs> ponytail holders. I don't know. I Maybe I'm missing it. But, and if y'all get it, explain. Um, not a knock on Jessica. She's awesome. And I'm pretty sure she came up with this. And so maybe that's what she was doing using a ponytail holder. And was like, what if we had some little nicer ones that could use to hold it together? Y'all let me know what you think in the comments. I'm gonna give this product, this tool, a six out of 10. Seven for usefulness, because I get the point of it. Like I, I do see the usefulness of it, but I'm just, I don't know, kind of unimpressed, I guess. <laughs> let me know what you guys think, or if you have some, and maybe I'm just missing the brilliance of it, or maybe I'm doing it wrong. Let me know, let me know. So that is my brutally honest tool review today or product review today. Um, I would love to know what other yarns you or tools you would love for me to review in season three. I need ideas. Like literally if there's a yarn that you've been wanting to try but you don't want to spend the money yet in case you hate it, let me know because I will buy it and check it out for you. Promise. <laughs> um, most likely. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> but I want to. That's what I want to do. I want to find the yarns that people are unsure of and tell you the truth about them and let you know. Um, or the products, the tools, um, what you think of them. And, or what you, you know. And, or maybe it's one that you love that your best friend hates and you want to know what I think. Let me know. Pick, you know, any yarn, any tool, crochet related item. I don't knit, so I don't, I can't really get into the knitting stuff, but crochet, yarn related, fiber related, I can do. So leave me a comment and let me know what you'd love to see me review for season three. I hope you guys have enjoyed season two. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching, um, for commenting, for sharing, for subscribing. It's been a blessing and I've enjoyed it so much. I'm looking forward to season three. Um, yeah, you guys have a great couple of weeks and I'll see you in September. Bye guys.